of my life. Okay, well, story of my life. I'm having technical difficulties. Yeah, and I'm doing this on my phone. And um, so I'm, oh, I think I got, I think I'm on. Hello, Mario. Sorry, I'm late. over my head <laughs> in technological challenges. Yesterday, I had, we did the whole broadcast. My microphone wasn't seeming to, to work. Hello, Renee. How we doing, Connie? Brenda, how's it going? Yeah, I'm in Rocky Ledge, Georgia, driving on my way to Florida. You might ask, why are you driving to Florida? That's a good question. I can't. I have no answer for that. Just thought it'd be thought it'd be fun, fun to go for a little ride. <laughs> oh, help us, Jesus! Oh, Kimberly, Connie, Miguel, Tracy, come on in here. Yeah, let's get going. I'm running late. I apologize. I had a. I don't know if it came to come up. Was I on? Because my screen was like frozen. And it said reconnecting, but I don't know. Hello, Sam. All right, so we're in uh, we're in this part five outline, I think it is, um, on the book of Nehemiah. And uh, our 52 days to rebuild. And I don't really want to do this driving, but I, I don't really have too many options <laughs> so bear with me we we're reading from uh, Nehemiah chapter 3 verse 28 29 the priest made repairs each in front of his own house and then it talks about Zadok the remnant priesthood who really found their place in uh, ministry to the Lord. There were those priests that ministered in behalf of the people. Zadok, it ta talks about ministered unto the Lord. And I think that's what God's trying to raise up in his church today is his ministry to him. There's been a lot of emphasis and most of the ministry has been on a horizontal level. And he, God's calling us to vertical, vertical ministry minister to the Lord. The basis and the power and the authority of our ministry to others will be directly related to our vertical connection with the Lord. In other words, you have to find yourself in Him before you can find yourself standing before people with any kind of power or authority. Uh, Jesus said it like this, without me, you can do nothing. So the idea was intimacy. It was abide in me. You know, the intimacy part of this message is is critical today. Um, and so, um, hello, Sarah. Hello, Missy. God bless you. Good to good to see you jump in here. Um, and so the intimacy message is really, if you'll notice, has been the message for for the last several years in the body as God's called his church back to him. You know, we, we, we were, we were good at, at being called to, to, you know, stand on platforms and stand in prayer and for people and, and stand in places to talk to people. But our weakness was, I think, you know, that we, we had a, a distance in our, in our uh, uh, intimacy with the Lord, and uh, and so God's call then is to that Zadok remnant to minister to the Lord. If you notice in the Book of Acts, they they found this uh, this truth, and and it talks about how when they ministered unto the Lord. Uh, in the book of Acts, then they, the Spirit said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I have unto them, for them. So out of, out of ministering to the Lord comes 
uh, prophetic destiny, prophetic promises, prophetic anointing, and prophetic power. And, and, and part of the ministry to the Lord is then when you're rightly connected with Him, you get rightly connected with the people uh, that are connected with Him. So it, it, things get in order. It's, a, it's divine alignment, we call it. And so, hello, Miranda. Hello, Naomi. Hello, Paul. And so this divine alignment is the only way that God will release his assignment. You know, because when things are out of order, God, God has issues. Because why? God is a God of order. And one of the areas of order, you know, that he's called us to is in the area of submission. When you look at this chapter in chapter three, you find this mix of leaders and and uh, the the uh, priests and the and this uh, community leaders, the political leaders, the the spiritual leaders. We're all in the family, all working together, all in alignment, and all submitted to. Nehemiah and his spiritual authority that God had given to him to, for the assignment to rebuild this wall. And they all worked in harmony. It was amazing how they worked in harmony with each other and toward each other. And, and, and the harmony was, on, was the basis of, uh, of how they got this work done in 52 days. They'd, they'd been at this job for over 80 years and it had not been able to get done because they weren't in alignment. There was not a spirit of, uh, of willingness. There was not a spirit of cooperation. There was not a spirit of submission. Therefore, the work was hindered. And I, I wonder you know, how much of our work has been hindered because we're, we're not in submission. We're not in alignment. We're not in agreement many times with, with our spiritual leaders. And, you know, and God, God doesn't call you to agree with everything. He says to submit, you know, and we read that verse yesterday. And here's why this is important. You should make a note of this and you should write this down. If you want to be in authority, you must learn to submit to authority. Let me say that again. If you want to be a person who walks in authority, that's, a, that's not a bad desire to, to walk in authority. You should be walking in authority, and it should be manifest, first of all, in your home. You should be walking in spiritual authority in your home, and as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a mother. Um, and if you, but, you, but if you want to walk in authority, you have to learn how to submit to authority. You have to learn how to be under authority, and this is where the American church has a problem because this uh, this church, the spirit of the church today is a spirit of independence. It's a spirit of stubbornness. It's a spirit of resistance. It's a spirit of out and out rebellion in many cases. Yes, I said the R word, it's rebellion. Because here's what, here's what Peter said. He said, obey them that have the rule over you, all right? Obey your spiritual authorities is how it says in the Amplified. And submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you. For they constantly keep watch over your souls and are guarding your spiritual war, or welfare. So the purpose of authority is for protection. Really, that's the, that's the essential uh, 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 purpose of all authority. The purpose of governmental authority is first and foremost to provide protection for the people. It's not to get, get taxes so they can go on big fat spending sprees. It, it, it's, it's, to get, it's to provide protection. The, the first call of, of a nation and its government is to, is to have a common defense. It's to protect people. Spiritual authority in the church is there to protect people and to be a constantly at watch uh, for people's spiritual welfare. Why? Because, because there's be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And I'll tell you, I've seen, I've seen 10 people for every one destroyed by a spirit of 
rebellion as I have any other thing uh, that you could mention. Because once you get once you get a bad attitude or a bad spirit toward authority, that it will it will lead you to rebellion. Even if even if it's passive aggressive rebellion, where you sit down in your heart, where you wouldn't perhaps openly. Uh, uh, confront a leader you wouldn't openly refuse but in your heart you sit down come on somebody <laughs> are you with me and so Nehemiah had to get the first of all Nehemiah's main job was to get the people to stand up in their heart he had to win them over and and show them that they could they could be confident that they were on the right track because he told them how God's hand was on me. God's hand has been good to me. Now, it's, it's incumbent on leaders that if you're on if you are in authority, that we don't abuse it. Because what happens in a lot of cases is the reason a lot of people are and do rebel is because they've only seen the abuses of spiritual authority. Oh, come on, I'm. I told you we're going to get into it. Are y'all good with it? Are y'all want to go there? You want to learn why and how to get to the how to get to the purposes of God and watch God do a great work? Then it's it is about mutual submission. It's about mutually being submitted, but but then too you can't carry in uh, toxicity into those. Uh, mutually submitted relationships. In other words, you got to let go of your spirit of control. You got to be willing to lose control. I said that you got to be even as a pastor. In that sense, you know there there's a there's a, a fine line between uh, sometimes between you know God being in charge and you being in charge. And a lot of times, you know, the guy in charge. Hasn't really completely submitted his his plans to the Lord. He's just trying to get something done, and he wants everybody to just blindly submit. But what Nehemiah did, notice he 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 sought God, got the hand of God on him. The favor of God was evident through him, and then it caused people to say, "I want to be a part of that. I can submit to that." I can submit to that. And that represented a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But but they submitted to it, and the joy of that visited them, and they strengthened themselves for the work. And so I get it. I, I know, you know, I, I know how this works. I've been around. This wasn't my first rodeo. I'm, I'm telling you, though, that, that God is calling the church to get in its, in, it, in its proper authority, in its proper alignment. And so it means it means obeying uh, those that have the rule over you, not running off like lone rangers and 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 uh, you know and living in ivory towers and and being stubbornly independent and not willing to even bring it and say what do you think about this, you know? Because here's what most people do: most people make their decision and then bring it to the pastor and ask the pastor to bless it. But if what if what if the pastor senses well I don't sense this is God, and then they get they then they get hurt because the pastor won't bless my plan, and 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 you see I'm here to tell you my job isn't to make the plan for you, but if but if but if you do it like that, in other words if you make your plan and then just bring it to me and say I want you to bless it that takes the real opportunity for God to direct it because the proper way to do it is say, Hey pastors, there's some things rolling around in my heart. And what do you think about this before you ever make the decision? Most of the time I've done this with ministers and ministries that have left, you know, and they made their decision and then they came to me, brought their decision and then wanted me to bless it. Even though I said, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, just, I, don't, I don't know. You gotta, you know, because do, is this what you want? Do you, is this protection? Listen, do you want do you want somebody just to put uh, the the seal of approval on it, or do you want God's direction? Do you really want God's blessing? Do you want God's favor? Then humble yourself and go low, and and submit it 
and, and trust God in it. Because that's another thing. See, it's really hard to trust God in submission sometimes because we go, well, I trust God, but I don't know if I trust that guy or not. But let me tell you something. That guy, if he's in, if, if God's placed him in your life as a spiritual authority, then your job is to submit to him because the blessing of your life is in that submission. And God by faith can direct that 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 direction and protect you through that spiritual authority, even if that authority is out of sync with God. And, and I can prove that to you scripturally too, because there were many times when the spiritual authorities were out of sync, but God still God still uh, gave direction, and the protection was in the person's submission, not in the person. Ooh, glory to God. Are y'all with me this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm, I'm just telling you. Spiritual authority is like an umbrella of protection. All right? I just, I, I want to go here real quick, and then I'm going to pray, and we'll, we'll go. So when Nehemiah called these people together, what Nehemiah was trying to accomplish was the right to get the wall built. But he had no he had no cooperation. He had no he had nobody co-laboring. He hadn't even cast the vision yet. And the reason he didn't rush into the vision casting part of it is because he wanted to wait before God and make sure he saw the thing, saw the problem, saw the situation, and had a and had the right evaluation that he had a plan, he had a strategy. We saw that the king blessed him and gave him everything he asked for, the papers, the permission, even uh, uh, even uh, guards and horsemen to ride with him. He gave him all that he asked for and even more. And then when he went to the people and said, here's what God has put on my heart and here's what God is showing me to do, then the people submitted to that and said, yes, we can buy into that. We can buy into that. This is what the church has to do. We have to get the buy-in on the vision of what God is trying to accomplish. Because many of us, we're not here. People go, well, you know, the problem here is uh, we're not on the same page. Same page? Are you, we're not even in the same book. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And, and so... Um, I'm telling you, Nehemiah got him on the same page, even to the same paragraph, even to the same sentence. Whew, glory to God. And that's why the work went so good. That's Yeah, they had opposition. They had, they had to fight through some things, but that's the nature of God's work anyway. Show me a work of God that didn't have some opposition in it. Show me a work of God that didn't have some difficulty within it. If, it. if it has no difficulty, I doubt if it's a, anything to do with God. People go, oh, that was so smooth. There wasn't even a problem. Yeah, well, probably that's because you cut corners or you compromise. Because if you're doing a work for God, Sanballat and Tobiah will always show up and they're always going to ridicule, mock, try to stop you. They're going to put blocks in front of you. That's how you know sometimes many times that you're on the right track. You'll know the value of your work by the by the value of your enemies, the, by the strength of your enemies. If the work is really important, you're going to have some strong enemies. Oh, come on, somebody. And that should just give you more determination. Man, Lord God, I'm not getting discouraged over Sandblatt and Tobiah. I ain't coming down from this wall. I'm not going to stop what I'm doing because this just shows me I'm on the right track. This dumb devil just revealed that I'm, I am, I'm even more on track than I thought I was because I'm not coming down. Thank you, Lord, for these. Thank you, Lord, for the opposition that you put in my life. It's helping make me a better leader make me a better person, make me a better, uh, a, a, a better um, follower of the Lord. Are, are y'all with me this morning? And so, uh, and so I, I, I wanted to, uh, uh, let me wrap this up. So submission is God's design. All the universe is designed with submission in it. And then in that submission is a protection. 
So like, for example, Adam, when God put Adam in a beautiful, perfect garden, as long as Adam was in submission to God, he had divine protection. But the moment that, that Adam rebelled against the word and the will of God, that protection was removed. And he, was, and he had to be removed from the garden. And we look at that and we go, well, you know, why does God do that? Listen, can I just tell you something, fathers? You're the umbrella of protection for your children. And that means you must be submitted to God because any areas you're not submitted to God means there's holes in your umbrella where the rain or the or destructive temptations can come through. Picture a, a, an umbrella with big holes in it. What good is it? What good is a spiritual authority if that authority has, has areas they have not submitted to God? You see the idea? Every priest had to clean up and take care of what was in front of his own house. Oh, hallelujah. Do you, are you hearing me today? You have to take care of the holes in your umbrella. It's funny to me how we're quick to point out everybody else's holes, everybody else's weaknesses, everybody else's faults, everybody else's failures. And we're so hard to recognize the, our own holes in our own umbrella. Because when you're fully submitted to God as we're supposed to be, then you get the full protection of God as God intended it to be. And when Adam sinned, he was kicked out of the garden. There was holes in his life and the holes in his life uh, represented places that destructive temptation would come to the human race. And the mess that we're in now all happened out of a failure of submission. Or we would just, could just call it obedience. Why? Because obedience is the key to submission. Remember when Saul disobeyed God, and I'll close. Remember when Saul disobeyed God in, in the book of Samuel, you'll read this, some, it's 1 Samuel 15. God had given Saul chance after chance after chance. Saul proved to be a man of the flesh, a man of, who was uh, stubborn, a man who had a, had a stubborn heart uh, and had a, had a stiff neck. And he, he just was constantly uh, sabotaging what God was trying to do with Saul and he would end, end up being disobedient um, and so remember when Samuel gave him the charge to go fight uh, King Agag I think it was and he said destroy everything don't take anything because this was a heathen nation all the influences all of the things that had evil curses and all kinds of incantation and demonic witchcraft up as a part of it. He said, I want you to destroy all of it. Even to the sheep and the, and the, and the, and the, uh, the animals and everything. And, and don't bring anything back. Saul goes and defeats the Amalekites and he brings, he comes back to Israel, uh, to Jerusalem and he's just like having a processional and everybody's rejoicing and everybody's happy because Saul just led him in a great victory. And Samuel walks up and he goes, how did it go, Saul? And Saul goes, oh man, this was the best day, the Lord's victory and all this. And all of a sudden in the background, Samuel hears, bah, bah. and Saul go, or Samuel goes, what is that? He goes, oh, that's the sheep that we kept. And we kept some of the, the, we kept the best of the sheep, the best of the bulls, the best of the, uh, of the livestock, and we're going to offer it to God for a sacrifice. Sounds, sounds religious, sounds right, right? Sounds like here's a man who's got it on, uh, on track here. But remember, his commandment was don't spare anything. Come on, it was simple. Don't spare anything. And yet he took it upon himself to spare the best with the, with the rationalization that I'm going to offer it to God. Are you with me? 
And Samuel says, oh, Saul, he says, you've made a grave error here. And for this, the kingdom has been rent from you. Because he committed the ultimate act of treason, of rebellion, when he blatantly disobeyed God. And people go, oh, I'm so glad we're under grace and we don't have to worry about that. I, I, I want to... I want to throw something at you here that grace does not and will not be an excuse for direct disobedience against God. And when and when listen to what listen to what Samuel told Saul. He said Saul to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken the fat of rams. And so what you have to realize is that what God's looking for is your obedience, not your sacrifice. Uh, he, he ain't interested in your religious trip. He's interested in your heart and whether it's submitted and, and whether it's going to obey or not. And listen to his words. He goes on. He says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as as the sin of idolatry <laughs> listen why is witchcraft and rebellion linked there by Samuel why let me ask you this question listen. why is rebellion for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft now witchcraft we know what witchcraft is it's it, it's 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 tapping into the power of darkness you know whether it's by incantation spells demonic uh, demonic worship uh, you know uh, people who are going after the dark side or even people who are trying to in, get involved in white magic which is the uh, which is you're trying to get power illegitimately witchcraft is the is the is 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 trying to get power illegitimately not through god and so witchcraft is an awful thing that's why you as a believer you should keep your hands off of of uh, of things that pertain to, to 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 witchcraft like and you shouldn't dabble in and some and some of this listen some of the things going on in in in, in some of our churches is is likened to witchcraft it's power, people trying to get power illegitimately. Manipulation, control is a spirit of witchcraft. But let me, let me, I don't want to get off on that. Let, let me, let me get, reel it back in here. Listen, why is rebellion and witchcraft compared to as the same? Listen to this, because they're both under the influence of Satan. Rebellion has its root in the king of rebellion, or we, let's call him the prince of rebellion, because he ain't no king. But Satan, why did Satan get kicked out of heaven? Rebellion. What is Satan's chief goal in the in the church? Is it just get? Is it just to get people to sin? No, sin only comes via rebellion the problem is not the sin the problem is the rebellion if you want to deal and get rid of the sin in your life deal with the rebellion in your heart oh the sun's rising up what a beautiful day what a beautiful morning are you with me what rebellion and witchcraft are both under the influence of satan and what God wants, obedience is better than sacrifice. Why? Because your spiritual umbrella, the thing that protects you against Satan and his destructive temptation, is submission to God. And any areas that you're not submitted to God represent holes in your umbrella. And listen to me, they don't just come on you. They come to those who are under your authority. So if you're wanting to know why your kids are in rebellion, hmm, hum, hum, Father, I just pray today 
that you'll open people's eyes and open their hearts to the truths that we're talking about. I pray, God, that you will just give us an awareness. And God, let us stop and ponder this and search and find any holes in our umbrella, any areas in our life where we're not fully submitted to you. We all have some areas, Lord. This is not the mystery. The mystery that's hidden from us is just how deep and how how wide some of these re rebellious things have worked in our lives. Lord, many of our critis critical spirits and our judgmental spirits and our, and our mouth is tied to the rebellion in our heart. Much of the actions that we're struggling with, the, our inability to su submit to a leader, our inability to, to have joy in service is because of rebellion in our heart. God, I pray that you'll speak to us and you'll help us. I pray for husbands and wives to deal with the rebellion in their relationships. I pray for moms and dads to deal with the rebellion in their own hearts before they try to get the, the, the splinter out of their kids' eyes. I pray, God, as spiritual leaders, you'll deal with pastors. Help us, Lord, not to use our authority illegitimately. Forgive us, Lord. But I pray that the church will learn, God, how to submit to those who are in authority. I pray, God, this is our protection. This is going to be so important in the days that are coming on the earth. God, I thank you for each one today. I pray you'll bless them this week. Give them a tremendous thanksgiving. Lord, let families just be ministered to. Let there be healing, God. I just speak healing into families in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that, that some of the broken relationships, some of the rebellion, that even, that, that be, even by what we're hearing here today, well, you'll, you'll turn our hearts toward our children, and our children's hearts will be turned toward us as we humble ourselves and we may even have to sit down with our own kids and say, I need you to forgive me. I need you to forgive me because I've been trying to fix you when really it's me that needs fixing. What a breakthrough that would be, Lord. I just pray for grace and mercy, peace and joy, and, a, and that's the power of love to overtake each one. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. And um, yeah, man, just just pray and see what the Lord would have and how he'd have you approach some of the fractured relationships in your family. Is there a spirit of rebellion behind it? Is there a stubbornness behind it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not stubborn. I've just dug my heels in. I'm the king of stubborn. Yeah. I am as mule-headed as a man can possibly be. But God is tenderizing. He's changing hearts. He's showing me, Mike, go low. Go lower. Go, And if you go low, I'll lift you up. If you exalt yourself, he'll bring you down. But if he said, if you humble yourself, I will lift you up. Have a great Thanksgiving. Love you guys. Pray for us to stay safe on these crazy highways. In Jesus' name, bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving.